Hey programmers, welcome back to day nine of the Advent of Code. So let's start by taking a look at today's input file. So it's gonna look something like this. It's just going to be a file with a bunch of positive numbers each on their own line. And so what is today's prompt all about doing? Well, what we have to do is really look at uh, some previous numbers based on our current position. So as we kind of trace through it, just understanding the problem in this example, we'll say that we have a preamble size of five. That means I have to look at the last five numbers based on my current position. In other words, we consider these first five numbers just our preamble, so we don't actually need to analyze those numbers in particular. We should really start looking at the sixth number of 40. All right? And what I basically have to check is, you know, can I generate 40 by taking the sum of two of the previous five numbers? And this is actually a scenario that works out because I can take the sum of 15 plus 25, which does give me 40. So in general, uh, many of the numbers in our list will satisfy this property, right? Here I have highlighted with the pink dot, the two numbers that sum up to our current target number in the pink box. So 55 can be generated by doing 15 plus 40 and so on. However, formally put in part one, what they want us to do is figure out the first number in the list that is not the sum of two of the previous five numbers. If we speed things up, that would actually result in this 127, right? 127 is not the sum of any two of the last five numbers. So that would be the answer we want to return. And so we just want to return the final answer of 127. However, in our actual problem, they give us a preamble size that's a little larger. We want to actually deal with the last 25 numbers. That being said, this shouldn't be too hard to implement because it's just a matter of using the classic sliding window strategy. Let's jump right in. All right, let's code up part one. So in my part one file, I have my classic read lines function. Let's just start by reading all the lines from our file. It looks like we need to convert them into some actual number data. So I'll do await read lines. Should give me a nice array of those strings. I'll save that into my lines, but let me more importantly get the true numbers by doing lines.map, then using that number static method, right? So let's see what the numbers look like right now. We'll do console.log on numbers. Should be a pretty large array of these numbers, right? Let's run part one. And so I'll start by creating a helper function just to check if there is a pair of numbers that adds to my sum, right? So I'm gonna do const, we'll call it pair sum. It's gonna take in an array and also a target. And in general, uh, let's say I called my pair sum method and I gave an array like this, we'll say one, two, let's say four, seven. So let's say that was my array and let's say my target was five. I want this to return uh, the Boolean true. In a similar way, we can have a similar example. Let's say that I wanted to find the sum of, let's say 10 uh, within this array, that should return false, right? There is no such pair like that. And so to actually solve this one, it's a matter of just finding a pair. So I could use nested loops, set i equal to zero, iterate while i is less than array.length, and of course do i plus plus. And I need a nested loop to grab the other element in the pair. So I'll add that into the mix. And of course, this will be for my j. Looks like I'm also missing some parentheses over here. And at this point, why don't I also go ahead and implement this so I don't have any duplicate pairs. It shouldn't matter too much since we just want some Boolean information here. But in general, if you want unique pairs, then you should do j equals i plus one. If I ensure that uh, j begins one greater than i, I'm looking at all unique pairs. And then from here, I just wanna check if uh, these pair of elements sum to the target. So if array at index i plus array at index j, if their sum is exactly the target, then I found a good pair, right? So I'm going to return true. And now otherwise, that means I don't find any pairs that sum to my target. So then I can return false. So this should be a nice helper function for us. Uh, we'll go ahead and test this code. I should get true false right now. Cool, so there I have my true false. Looks like my helper function is working. And now I think I can go ahead and just solve this problem. So I wanna really establish my sliding window. And I'm gonna find this helper function really useful. So what I'll do is, let me just start a loop maybe in my main function. So I'll say for let's i equals, <coughs> we'll say zero, 
or not even zero. I should really start, I guess, uh, 25. Then I want to go while i is less than numbers.length. I'll also do i++. So for the separate loop, I want to do the sliding window, and I want to look at the previous 25. So I'm going to begin my i at 25, and I can look at the previous uh, elements at indices 0 through 24, which would be the last 10, 25, technically, right? So let me grab that little window. So I'll say const previous. And what I'll do is I'll set this equal to, let's say, uh, numbers dot slice. And I want to slice the last 25. So I believe I can just say, go up to my current position, i, and give me the i minus 25 as a starting point, All right? So it's kind of reason what this one's uh, referring to. So let's say I begin this for loop. Right now, i is 25, which technically means I'm looking at the 26th uh, element of the list because remember our indices start at zero, right? So I won't be including um, the element at index 25, which is good. And when I do 25 minus 25, I get zero. So this gives me elements zero through 24, which would be the previous, right? And now I can just check, hey, if my previous slice if that contains the pair sum. So I'll say pair sum of the previous for my current element, which would just be numbers at index i, right? Can I find two elements that sum to my current number, numbers at index i, right? In the last 25. So if that's false, then I've actually found the invalid number. So I'll actually express it like this. So if it's false, then I'll just return that number that is the invalid one. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and test this and see see what we get. I should get this answer at the bottom. It starts with 3738. Nice, and there we have our solution. One thing we'll do before we talk about part two is maybe just refactor this code. We could maybe put this in its own function. So maybe generically, I'll create a function called, let's say, first invalid. It's going to take in the array of numbers then I can just abstract this logic away, right? So I'll take this code, maybe put over here, same code as before, let me fix these braces. And then with that, I'll just have to call and return me doing first invalid of the numbers array. Because I do believe we're gonna need this nice helper function for part two. Nice, and this code is still working. Awesome. Let's head back to the drawing board and talk about part two. All right, now let's talk about part two. So in part two, we're gonna use the same example input as last time, and we're actually gonna use our result from part one. Recall that our target was 127. That was the lone invalid number. But this time we have a different question to answer. Uh, in particular, what we want to do is find a contiguous sequence of at least two numbers that sum to our target of 127. Here, contiguous means that we can't skip elements, so they have to be all uh, in a row, basically. So for example, if we kind of wanted to reason out uh, what is the exact contiguous sequence that sums to 127, it would be this highlighted sequence I have in green. And what I want to do is really take the sum of the min and max of this sequence. So among the elements in this sequence, the min would be 15 and the max would be 47. If I take their sum, that would give me 62. And that's actually the answer you should submit to the advent of code. But with that, how can we come up with a general algorithm for finding uh, the subarray that contains our target, right? If we added all those elements up. Well, we can just use a, a pretty generic pattern that iterates through all possible subarrays of some larger array. It's really just gonna be a matter of using nested loops. So here's what we'll do. Let's start to trace through this algorithm. We'll begin with one loop, and it's gonna iterate normally uh, through our list. We'll call it the start. And I'm gonna need an inner loop to represent the endpoint that I'm looking at, right? So the star and end give me some logical array that I'm considering, right? Now what's really important to do is because they say that a subarray needs to have at least two elements, I'm gonna make sure that I begin my end pointer uh, one after my start, right? And I know if I had nested loops and my inner loop was the end pointer, then my end pointer would increment pretty quickly. And basically at any point in time, if I look at the start and end, they basically form the start and end of some subarray that I'm considering. And as I go, I can just check some conditional statement to see if the sum of all these elements is my target of 127. So all these iterations are pretty straightforward. 
Of course, we can speed things up once we get to the end. We know that at this point, a start would now do its iteration. And I look at my next set of different subarrays. And this will continue until eventually we figure out exactly the subarray. And eventually we find the answer just about here. Right, the sum of the elements in this subarray would be 127. And we know we can implement this pretty easily using nested loops. And that kind of gives us a hint into what the complexity of this is so far, right? We know that our outer loop is gonna have O of N uh, iterations, and we have an inner loop, so that gives me N times N. But I also have to do the additional checking to make sure that the sum of all elements uh, in this subarray is my target. So to calculate that sum, uh, in the worst case, one of those subarrays is gonna have length N. So I multiply an additional n here, giving me overall an n cubed time complexity, which in the grand scheme of things isn't the most efficient complexity class, but for a reasonable size uh, input, this shouldn't be too slow to actually run. With that, let's jump into the code. All right, so here I am in my part two file and I just have pasted in all of the code we used in part one. Something we definitely need to keep is us finding out what the first invalid number is. So it's really the same numbers before, but I don't just want to hard code it. So I'll call this my const, we'll call this my invalid num. And now what I want to do is find some uh, subarray uh, that can sum up to my invalid number. So I kind of foresee us needing uh, something to calculate the sum of a subarray. So I'll create a really small helper function to do that. So I'll say const to find my, we'll say subarray. Go ahead and take in some arguments. We'll call it array. And we can use, you know, reduce here if we wanted to. I'll just keep it nothing fancy. And we'll just use a classic sum strategy. So I'll set some initial sum equal to zero. Then I'll iterate through every element of the array. So I can say four, we'll say let le of array. So that gives me the elements. And for every element, just add it into the sum. Also changing and increasing the sum, right? And then just return uh, that sum variable. So that function should be good to go. I do like to test everything as I go. So let me try to call this function. I'll call sum array and I'll give it elements, that's parentheses here. I'll give it the elements, let's say five, two, and eight, right? So this should be a nice 15 if this is working. We'll just run part two uh, as it is. Nice, so there's my 15. So this helper is gonna be useful. And now I need code to uh, look at all possible uh, subarrays, right? Like subsequences, we call it. And so I'm going to use that strategy from the whiteboard. So we'll set up nested loops, kind of like we always do, to really point to the start and end of our like logical subarray that we're considering. So I start at the very beginning. So I can say let i equal zero, go from i less than numbers dot length, i plus plus, and pretty similar for j. But I need to make sure that I don't look at any like strange subarrays. So at any point in time, it should be the case that i is less than j. I don't want like my start and end to cross. That would be bad, right? So to fix that, kind of like we mentioned before, I can just look at j beginning at i plus one. This is gonna ensure that j starts one greater than i, and it only gets larger from there because I do j plus plus. So this gives me a nice window. And uh, what you also notice here is I'll consider like the subarray I'm, I'm at as being inclusive, right? So if let's say i is five and j is eight, that means I wanna look at elements uh, five through eight, including both of those bounds, right? So let me grab a slice here. So I'll say const my sub array, sub array, and I'll do numbers.slice. I have to be very tricky here because by default, the first index of slice is inclusive, but the second index is exclusive, right? So if I write j here, that would be me excluding the jth element. But if I want to include the jth element, then I better do uh, j plus one like this, right? So that's looking uh, pretty good. And then we just want to find the sum of this subarray. So we'll check if the sum of the subarray, if that is equal to my invalid number, then I've actually just found uh, exactly the sequence I'm looking for, right? So I'll enter this if statement. But what they want us to do in the context of the problem is return uh, looks like the min plus the max. So well, really what we'll do is return, we'll say math.min, I'll take the minimum in that subarray, so I'll spread it out. Recall that math.min and math.max take in comma separate arguments. 
So we'll take the min of the subarray and add it with the math.max of the subarray as well, right? And it says in the problem that we're guaranteed to find uh, some subarray that has this property. So we should expect to return early over here. If this is working, I should get the result that starts with 5115. Of course, you should be doing this for your particular input file. It is different for every user, right? So let's give this a go, part two. Cool, it took a little bit to run, but there it is, right? This is a correct solution. Notice that there is a sort of noticeable you know, delay, which in the context of the computer world is pretty noticeable. But if we wanna kind of give it a shot, let's say we want to take the elapsed time of this operation. Let's say maybe just starting after we find the invalid number, what we can do is take const, we'll call it our end time, or rather this is our start time, of course. And I'll do date.now. Then I'll also calculate the end time right about maybe when we find our, our subarray. So I'm not including um, the time that we use to calculate the min and max. Really, we have the expectation that this like triple nested loop is going to be the limiting factor. Remember that sum array, this function call, is technically its own loop, right? So I'll calculate my end time here. Then I can go ahead and say maybe how long it took. So I can console.log. We'll say finished in, and I want some string interpolation here. So I finished in, let's say, end time minus start time milliseconds, right? So that'll tell us exactly how much elapsed time our triple nested structure took. I'll give us a shot again. So for us, it takes about, it looks like 400 milliseconds, right? Because we did kind of uh, expect that this would be uh, n cubed, but we do get a reasonable answer and not really that much time at all for like our human, uh, you know, feel. Awesome, so there we have a solution for day nine, part two. So this problem was probably one of the, the easiest problems as of late. Um, you could probably spend more time optimizing uh, this sort of nested loop structure. I'll save that battle for another day though, because it was you know pretty reasonable to calculate, at least on my computer. So with that, I'll catch you tomorrow for day 10.